Hi everybody, this is Alan Underwood with CodingBlocks.net and in today's video, I wanted to go over something that we talked about in the podcast when we went through the Clean Code series and if you haven't listened to that series, we've gotten a lot of great feedback on it. People really enjoyed just talking through the book and some of the examples and, and things that we've seen in our experience. So I'll have a link in the description below so you can go check those out. But what I wanted to talk about today is naming and it's not just naming like we talked about in the clean code series, it's organizing and, and the names that come along with it and the implications of it. So jumping in real quick here, one of the things that, that drives me crazy is when I see a folder like, like this one, right? I see things like this all the time where you have this configuration folder and inside this folder, you have these files and you would just assume that these things all relate to each other, right? Somehow, because why else would they all be bundled up here? They're obviously configurations, but if we open up this job class and just keep in mind, these are all sort of contrived classes just to, to show what I'm talking about here. But if you look in this job class, it has a name and then it has a schedule. All right. So that's all fine and dandy. That's all in there. But th these preferences aren't a part of jobs. Privacy is not. Sorters isn't. So the schedule one sort of belongs to this job class here. Now, as much as this drives me crazy that they're all in this flat file structure here, what drives me even more crazy is when you put multiple classes into a single class. So instead of having this separate schedule class, you know, somebody might get lazy and just put public schedule in here and then, and then create it in line here. And the problem with that is unless you're in an IDE, and you have the ability to navigate to something by hitting F12 or whatever, you have no idea where this thing actually lives, right? Not by looking at just code or names. So here's one of the things that I, I ran into the other day, and it's funny just how much time you can spend on this stuff. So similar with this preferences one here, right? So it's got this, this background color, and then it's also got this privacy class that's a part of it. So this is tied to it, but schedules and sorters aren't. So the problem is looking at this, you can't easily see how things relate to each other. And to me, that's a problem, right? Like part of your code should be able, you should be able to read your classes, right? And in your classes, you name your methods properly and all that. Well, you should be able to do the same thing looking at your file structure to a certain degree. So one thing that a lot of times you might do is you might create this new jobs folder, right? And you're going to want to put these things in here. Now, one of the things that people kind of struggle with is now, okay, so I have this job. So essentially I've got this naming demo dot configuration dot jobs. I don't really want a jobs dot job class in here. So sometimes what people will do is they'll come in here and say, okay, well, I'm going to add a class. And I'm going to name this main because this is the main class in here. And I have a problem with this because on the surface, that seems like that's fine. But ultimately, what, what does main mean? It means it's the main job. It's the main class. It's the main what? Main typically means there's, it's, it's the primary one, but there's a secondary one. When in this case, that's not really what, what's going on, right? Job is really the starting class for this configuration. And then schedule just happens to be another class that it uses, right? So main doesn't really make much sense because then if you just put schedule in here with it, then it sounds like main's the primary focus and schedule's the secondary focus. And that's not what that means, right? Schedule is a part of whatever's happening there. So... So you might say, okay, well, maybe we just call this base, right? Because base, base sounds good. This is, this is the class that, you know, this is the base class and the jobs thing. The problem with that is now you're mixing coding keywords with class names, and it leads you to believe something. If you're talking about a base class in object-oriented programming, then you expect that this thing is the super class and there's going to be some subclasses out there somewhere. And again, at least the way that this jobs.cs lives or this job.cs lives, there's no subclassing going on here. This is a simple configuration class, right? This is just almost like a POCO. It's, it's a simple C sharp file here. So again, the naming of that calling it base doesn't really 
it doesn't work because it can be confusing to a programmer just looking at it what it means so in that regard i think probably your best bet is to truly just bring this thing in yeah you're gonna have some namespace issues but you know let's just bring it in the way it's supposed to be so uh, for whatever reason, oh, I think I've got my C sharper dis or resharper disabled right now because I need to put in my new key. But what you can do is drag this thing up here. Resharper actually has a nice feature in it that will allow you to have it also fix your namespace as it comes along. Uh, it doesn't look like Visual Studio has that built in. So we'll go ahead and do that so it doesn't bark about it. So what I would do is I would put my job dot cs inside my jobs configuration folder and then i would also bring in this case the schedule file in there as well and to me at least that makes sense right so now it's obvious looking at this thing that you have configuration you have jobs job dot cs okay so sure you've got naming demo dot configuration dot jobs dot job where you go to use it but really, who cares that much, right? At least it's clear what the purpose of this thing is. And then I would say you do the same thing for these other ones, right? So we add a new folder. In this case, we'll call this one Preferences. And then let's go ahead and add a new folder. And we'll call this one Privacy. I think it was Privacy. Is that what I did? Oh, I think I had Filters. Uh, I think I'm going to move something that I wasn't supposed to move. No, that's right. I don't know what I did now. Maybe I didn't have it. Uh, so I deleted a file is what I did. That's awesome. So I had a filters.cs that used the sorters here. So we'll, we'll code that here in a second just for the heck of it. But anyway, so basically what I'd say now is looking at preferences, right? It has a privacy thing. So we move this in here. Yes, let's go ahead and move privacy in there too. Fine, fix the namespace, do the same thing on privacy, fix the namespace. Oh, that's awesome, I did it wrong. This is preferences, muscle memory. All right, so we've got these namespaces in effect. We're gonna have configuration.preferences.preferences, fine, whatever, who cares, doesn't really matter that much. We got the job and the schedule and then really like i said i was supposed to have another class here we'll go ahead and do it this was going to be filter.cs and i think i had something it was pretty mundane but let's just say i had a public sorter sorters i enumerable sorter sorters Right, so we have something like that, and let's go ahead and move this in here now. And we will fix the namespace on that. Dot preference, no dot filters. All right, so now you can look at this thing and you know exactly what you've got, right? You know that in this configuration folder, you now got this filters one, and you know that these classes in here have something to do with this filter, these two, they're related somehow, right? Jobs, these are related, preferences, these are related. Now, there's nothing wrong with if you have some sort of base configuration file out here that, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe you have a naming configuration. And in here, you know, you make this public class naming and I don't know, string proper name. Again, all very contrived stuff, but let's say that now every every one of your you know additional configurations out there, they could either inherit from that other one, or maybe you know you're using the uh, uh, not decorator pattern, but you're, you're composing instead of inheriting, and so now you're going to say that you have naming you know naming config. Right, because that thing is going to be used across maybe several of these things. You're gonna have, which you know, obviously it makes sense to have a name up there and the naming. 
Maybe you're going to refactor that out later or something. But you see what I'm saying? So at least now you can look and say, oh, well, this looks like this might be used by several of these things. And now I can look in here and I can see that all of these line up and make sense. So while this may seem kind of small and insignificant, believe it or not, making these small little decisions when you're setting up your code can make an absolutely massive difference in your ability to follow what's happening in your application. If you end up with a folder that has 50 files listed out, you know, flat in a line, and only a couple of them are related to each other, it ends up making it really a mess to look through and mentally go through the exercise of trying to map those things out. So hopefully this did a little something for you. You know, don't worry so much that your namespace and your class file have the same name at the end. Ultimately, it doesn't matter as long as you can look at your code and see what's supposed to be going on, then it's a win, right? This stuff is interpreted by, by computers. They don't care what you name them. This is for you. So hopefully that's helpful a little bit. I, I thought this went along pretty nicely with the clean, clo clean code stuff. And, and it's something that we face all the time. And really uh, naming is way harder than what it should be. And, you know, hopefully this helps out a little bit. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you loved it and you want to get more like this over time, please subscribe to the channel and share with any friends or any other coders that you're looking for quick tips. Or again, definitely go check out the podcast. We've got tons of content out there and most of it's pretty evergreen. So uh, there's, there's just all kinds of topics. We've done tons of book reviews and stuff. So, you know, if you enjoyed, please do go check that out and you can find that in the links below or just head over to codingblocks.net and you can, you know, subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you like to get your podcast. So thanks for hanging out and we'll catch up next time.